Welcome back. You're watching the number one home improvement YouTube channel in the entire world. Today, I'm going to show you how I join a new wall to an old wall. We're going to be doing some taping and some mudding. As you can see, um, there's no texture on this part here. This is the original uh, texture. This was fully drywalled, fully finished when the house was built up to this point. After this point, this was all just wood framing. And this was the only framing in the basement. Nothing else was finished. So when they finished the basement, they just wrapped this corner here, just like this. And they didn't go back and do any sort of texturing. We'll probably take this back to here. I'm gonna take the railing off. And what I mean by taking it back to here is I gotta float this out. So you feather it out, you spread that hump out over a good distance and you don't see it, especially after you put texture on it. You can see they used a lot of mud on this old corner bead. I pulled the corner bead off. So all this mud here, I gotta take a hammer and a, and a blade and just kind of pop this back as much as I can to make room for the tape and to make this transition easier. If you like this shirt, I've got lots more just like it for sale on the handyman.store. It'll be linked in the description and the first pinned comment in the comment section. Time to mix up some joint compound. Now, you probably want, what am I wearing? Well, these are my coveralls. This is so I don't get my fancy handyman t-shirts all messed up with joint compound. You can buy these on Amazon. It'll be linked in the description and you can go to my Amazon store, find these and a whole bunch of other tools. All these tools will be there. This here is a 14 inch pan, six inch knife, paper tape. This here is the joint compound. Comes in a bag inside of a cardboard box. This is not ready to use. You have to mix it, and for the taping process, you have to thin it down with water. Now for larger jobs, I will scoop this into a five gallon bucket and use a mixer attached to a drill to mix it and then add water to get the right consistency for whatever process I'm doing. This first process is taping. And it needs to be quite thin because we need this thin enough to soak into the tape. You can see how it needs to be mixed. Just a few swipes of the, the knife there, you get a much better consistency. This is some pretty good consistency for floating, but not for the taping. I need to thin this down. Like I said, I need this to seep to soak all the way into that paper tape. As you can see, I've added some water to it. I'm going to a safe place to mix it. I don't want to be mixing it all out here. Should give you an idea of the consistency that I have it mixed to for taping.
the next day. Everything is dried. I'm only going to be here for about 10 to 15 minutes. If things go well. Uh, not going to do any sanding. All I'm going to do is a little bit of that. Just want to scrape off any bumps or ridges. Uh, I want to keep the sanding dust for one time. Got some mud scooped into the pan, and I, I'm not going to be I'm not going to be thinning it down with water for this this application. Just got to be mixed up thoroughly. I'm going to start in the other room. That is the the side that's going to take the most work. So you may be curious what we're doing where this wall meets this wall. Caulk. If you choose to go the route where you do tape, um, you're going to have to feather this out to here and you're going to have just a whole bunch more unnecessary work to texture this wall, paint this wall, caulk it. I've done this many times in previous projects. Uh, I'll link some of them below. They've held up great. Uh, some are going into their 10th year. Got to use a quality caulk. Uh, Dynaflex Ultra. Uh, has been working great for me. Uh, it's paintable, got a pretty good stretch factor to it. This is the bit that I pulled out of the tube and you can see how how stretchy that is. Pretty good and stretchy. All the floating is done and it's time to sand. Uh, I have a tendency to take it a little, little further than is necessary for texture. There's not a speck of wall that is not going to have the, the orange peel textured slathered all over it. I use this when I sand. It's got a perforated screen. This is equivalent of sandpaper. It's hooked up to my shop vac. I've had great success with this in the past. Even though I have it hooked up to a shop vac, I got plastic here, I got plastic here. I have a whole freaking Dexter room over here plasticed off. Plastic, plastic, plastic everywhere. The floor's got plastic. There's oil-based and water-based texture. I'll discuss that in a minute once I get done sanding. Okay, it's time to texture this section of wall. Keep in mind, I only turn this camera on maybe a tenth of the time, so there is a lot of work to get to this point. A lot of masking, a lot of repetitive sanding motions that aren't very entertaining. So just keep that in mind when you're watching this video, that there's a lot more involved than what you see. If you're interested in knowing how much I'm charging for this, as well as how I sell, drywall repair jobs like this to customers, go over to the Handyman Business YouTube channel. It'll be linked in the description. So if you've got questions about the business side of this project, there'll be a dedicated video that talks about the timeline, setting homeowner expectations, the whole process that I go through to prepare the customer for a successful job. This is water-based. Why am I using water-based? Water-based is easy to clean, but it takes longer to dry. 
This is a finished area. Even though I've gone to great lengths to mask off things, all I need is a wet sponge and I can wipe this off of surfaces like this uh, semi-gloss wall here, this probably an eggshell over here. If I happen to get some on the tile on the other side, it's real easy to clean up with a sponge. Oil-based, dries faster, and sticks harder. And there's a situation to use that too, when you're in a hurry. Now, rule number one, never spray it at the wall first. Whoo, see? You gotta pick a spot. A lot of fluid comes out when you first shoot it. There we go. You can dial this here for heavy or thin. I set it right in the middle and it looks way too fine. So I'm gonna kick it on over to heavy. Give it another shot, maybe. There we go, way thicker. Let me just show you what this looks like. This is real fine, this is real heavy. You can kind of get an idea of what that texture looks like. There's not a single spot on that wall that isn't covered by it. So I'll do a mixture of it. I'm gonna do a mixture of medium and heavy. Start with some heavy, let's do some circles. You got a, a little imperfection, don't worry, it's gonna get buried. Some of you might be wondering why I didn't mix up texture and put it in my hopper, get my air compressor out and save a couple dollars. Uh, it's just about time. Time. Time is money. Now I'm going to switch this over to fine and do a little blending. There you go, tape, mud, and texture to perfection. Just how perfect is it? You're gonna have to stick around. You're gonna have to hit the subscribe button, you have to click the bell, and you have to come back for the next video when I paint this thing. That's when you really know if you did a good job or not. Yep, three videos for this simple little project here. Goodbye.